Joining us today, we have a renowned hairstylist, having worked on some of the most famous and well coiffed celebrities. He's also owner of the brand The Cutter. I'd like to welcome to the show Mr. Derek The Cutter Clement. Welcome to the show, Derek. Yeah, Silban. It's a pleasure. How are you it's doing? It's a pleasure. Lovely. Lovely. Fantastic. Great stuff. I like your hat in it. It meshes well, with the... Well, it's, it's, it's about branding, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> it's about branding. <laughs> so, 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 you're a barber or a hairstylist? Massive difference. I'm a hairdresser. You're a hairdresser. Slash barber. Yes. <laughs> There's a reason why I said that, because I can't see your hair. I'm the one <laughs> <laughs> Yes, what can I say? You know, but tell me, how did you get the name Decutter? Decutter. Yes. Well, as, as I was saying uh, to a colleague the other day, I spent uh, 10 years in the States, over 10 years in yeah. the States, um, working with some of the best hairdressers. Mm. And one particular guy, uh, his name was Razor Sharp. And Razor Sharp said, Derek, no, you, you're too good, my brother. Yeah. You need to have a name, yeah. not just Derek. And so we debated about, you know, we went back and forth, and in the end, we came up with Decutter. Yeah. Uh, I remember him saying, he, he said, uh, D cutter. Mm. <laughs> yeah, D cutter. Because he liked cutting hair. I love, I love cutting hair, obviously. Uh, I mean, was trained by the best. And, and let me say before I start, mm. um, I was actually trained by the very best hairdresser on the planet. Yes. Uh, the late Winston Isaacs, okay. who owned Splinters. And I mean, he, he taught me to cut hair as an apprentice. I, I'm just picturing you and um, Razor Sharp walking down the road. Um, what, what, do, what do people say? <laughs> Razor sharp, be cut up. Do they run or? <laughs> I mean, tell you what, they're, they're brilliant brands, and, 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 and I loved it ever since. Yeah. Never changed it. Kept that name. Um, it's, it's, it's my brand. It's actually yeah. the company. It's actually registered. And so that's it. Love the name. Wow, wow. That, that's awesome. So let's talk about black hair now, because um, in the last decade or so, there's been a, a positive trend right. towards um, how we society view black natural hair. Mm -hmm. um, uh, what's in your opinion has been the catalyst? And is it truly indicative of society's views now um, toward natural hair changing or there's more work to be done? Because my wife is into natural hair now right, and, yeah. and, and there's been a shift. What, what's your take on that as a hairstyle? Right. Hair so um, black hair, natural hair is trending at the moment. Yes. It's, it's the trend. And I, I think it's... I'm natural, of course. As you oh, say. <laughs> Very natural. So am I. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think it's, it's, it's a brilliant trend simply because I think... Uh, the women or the sisters, as they now say, are claiming their hair back. Yes. In the past, of course, uh, we were socialized to, 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 to think that mm. only the relaxer would do. Yes. And, and we heard things like, um, in, in the corporate world, you couldn't go to work without your hair straight being straightened. Right. Yeah, you know, yeah. The women felt they had to be a pair much more accommodating. Mm for the city school. So, so anyway, I think um, the sisters have claimed their hair back. It's a brilliant idea. It's, it, it means that for the first time, we control the business. Yes. I'll tell you why I say this. Um, there's a massive influx of black hair manufacturers now. Okay. Doing their own stuff. Yeah. You, for, for example, um, castor oil comes to mind from Jamaica. It's a massive, massive, massive industry. And the sisters are now using all the natural products on natural hair. Yes. And so, so it, 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 it benefits us in the long run. So therefore, it is a claiming back process which is happening. There's a massive That's what's shift. happening. That's what's happening, yeah. yeah. So then, what, what would you then, in a professional, consider then um, is good hair? And how do you want to <laughs> achieve and make, Because in the Caribbean, yeah. from Jamaica, there's a... Well, not bad hair, man, good hair or something like that. No such. You know, you know, what, what's, what's, in your opinion, is a good hair? I, 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 and I understand the term. Yeah. And it, to me, it's, I, I stopped using the term many years ago. It's a pathetic term. Yes. All hair is good. Yes, but yes. I, know, I know what they meant. When they say good hair, it meant that your hair was either some, some kind of mixing took place. Yes. Either you, 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 your, your grandfather was yes. either or whatever. <laughs> so, you know, um, the good hair thing to me is, is, is yeah. pathetic. All hair is good as far as I'm concerned. All hair is, is great. So therefore, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, for the set the premise and set the base, yeah. all hair, all is, hair is, good. is good. Yes. Okay. Now, when we talk about good hair in the black community again, you know, the conversation always talk about, the, the, as we just said, mm. the textual discrimination right. and towards textual acceptance right. of natural hair. Mm. You just mentioned a while ago that natural hair is actually coming back this is or back people are actually stopped putting all these things in the air. That's right. But as society then, mm -hmm. or, or companies, organizations, 
we can accept that, sure. our sisters can accept that, sure. but are organizations moving with that? I think they are, I think they yeah. are. I mean, last week, I my cousin's here, she works, she's a massive, she does a massive job in the city, she's um, HR yeah. for a very large firm. And for many years, she kept on telling me, Derek, I can't, I can't go natural because my boss wouldn't, he yeah. just wouldn't have it, right? She cut the hair off the other day because mm. the hair was breaking so bad. Yeah. Cut the hair off into a lovely short afro. When she went to work, the first person who complimented her was a boss. Yeah. The, <laughs> an English guy said, oh my God, Laurie, your hair looks fantastic. Yeah, he loved yeah. it. So that might be something in the minds of the sisters. They always come with this, uh, this idea that, oh, I don't know, I can't cut my hair naturally. It's, 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 it, it, it wouldn't work yeah. in the workplace. I think that might be something in their mindset rather than what the company actually... If you go to work with your hair looking decent yeah. uh, in any texture, I think it's, it's acceptable. I mean, it's powerful what you said right there because about accepting yourself sure. and, and knowing yourself because it seemed, that seemed to be maybe one of the fundamental things. I mean, even if, when we look at even the whole issue with Jerk Rice, with Jamie Oliver and all that, right. that everything right. is about accepting That's yourself right. because I, right. I put a post out saying nobody can take what is yours it's and yours. what is yours. That's right. That's right. And therefore, when you celebrate who you are, That's right. then the world will have to move with that, isn't it, Derek? I, I totally agree. And, and I think you, you, you're right. I think it's, 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 for many years, black women have always used this, this pretext. Yes. Um, they can't go to work with the natural hair. Yeah. And I, I, I think quite, it's quite the contrary. Yeah. I, I think if your hair looks presentable, it's well shaped, it's, uh, it's, it's pleasing to the eye. Um, Everything's possible. Anything's possible. Well, that's great. And I, I believe it's a, it's a new day. I, I believe it's a new shift. And uh, listen, great stuff what you're doing. Sure, now, sure. you're going around um, countrywide with a program called Hair Surgery right. Sessions. Um, what are these hair, hair surgery sessions and what do our view is? Well, I think Hair Surgery was, first, was created by me in 2008 to, um, to provide information mm -hmm. um, and to provide support yes. for women of color who had hair problems, hair yeah. issues. And we know because of the relaxing of many, many years of straightening your hair, sometimes people lose their hair due to bad, wrong treatments, perhaps over-processing, for yes. example. And um, the idea was to really inform, to train them, to show them that, you know, this is what can, this is how it should be done. Yes. Uh, to, 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 for instance, the surgery first began with me messing around with fruits, herbs, and, 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 and vegetables to treat the hair. Really? Right, because so many, so many black women were complaining that the hair was So you're, you're like a doctor then, isn't it? Well, they, they are, they are. Like, <laughs> that's, the, that's the key thing. Yeah. You know, you provide information yes. uh, to help them to, re to, to, to regrowth the hair, to treat the hair back yeah. to its natural state. Wow, wow, that, that, that is powerful. So therefore, how, how is that going then? I mean, It's going very well. I mean, the, yeah. you know, we go all, all over the world. We, we, in fact, there's a class in Jamaica coming up very soon. We do classes in, in colleges and schools yes. at, at the salon. We, we provide a service. And it's very, very well received. And how, how can people find out about that? If anything? Well, through us and, and through yeah. social media. You know, we're on Facebook, we're on Instagram, yeah. we're on Twitter, through us. Wow, wow. Brand Decutter, the Brand Decutter, which provides the hair care products, books, merchandise, um, the positive trend. Mm -hmm. Now, with that positive trend and what is happening in society with um, young black men and all those sort of things, do you see yourself with this concept? as setting a sort of positive light within the black community or you're talking about all communities? I think all communities. I think um, for me, it's not just about doing hair alone. I think yeah. I'm a hairdresser, yes, but I think um, the brand needs to expand. So now we have the merchandising, we have shampoos, conditioners, mm. we have all sorts of things that come from the Decutter brand. Yes. So the brand itself is massive, really. It, it, it entails all aspects of hairdressing uh, besides per merchandising. And, 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 okay, so give us an idea like of a couple of the different um, brands within the decutter range, if anything. Well, the salon surgery is, mm. is, is a major part. We do master classes, yes. for instance. Um, we, we, we do events. There's, there's an event next week at, uh, in South London called yeah. Afro Hair Care Revolution. Yes. We give speeches. We give, um, I mean, all sorts of things. So the brand is really quite diverse. Yeah, because I, I had a guest um, some time ago, which was Mr. Tony Wade mm -hmm. and also Rudy Page. Mm -hmm. And they were one of the architects of the black Afro hair. Yeah, beauty um, back in the day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are we, uh, should I say we, are, are black people taking that back then? Taking back? Right, I mean, so let's take it in two stages. Tony Wade, um, yeah. amazing man. I'm inspired by Tony Wade. I mean, mm -hmm. Tony Wade was one of the pioneers with Dyke and Dryden back yes, in the day. Yes, yes. And Tony Wade is obviously still alive. He's not a very young man anymore, but I think he's a major um, 
uh, well, a legend as far as I'm concerned. Yes. Um, still doing great things. He did two wonderful books um, and they were quite successful. Mm. Uh, Rudy Page, we go back over 30 yeah. years. Rudy yeah. Page is another pioneer, legend. another legend. I call, him, I call him a he's, champion. He's a, he's a champion. <laughs> um, and so we've collaborated together to do yeah. major things uh, in the future. A uh, great guy, uh, hardworking and, and very inspiring. Mm. So are, are, we take, are, they, are we taking it back? Uh, 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 is the black community taking it back? Yes, we are. Because Rudy, Rudy Page actually owns that, that term, yes. Afro Hero Beauty. Yes. He, he created it. I think he owns it. Yes. He's it. So we'll take it back and we're going to do major things. We're doing something very soon, Rudy Page and I. Um, yes. We want to um, pay tribute to the legends, the pioneers yes. and the veterans. And these people were people who are alive and who passed. Yes. Uh, I mentioned Winston Isaacs, who was the, yes. the, 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 the owner of Splinters International. Uh, there's a marvelous lady called Carmen England. Yes. Carmen England was around, I don't know, back in the 50s. Yes. She had a very successful shop in, in, in Piccadilly Circus. Mm. And apparently she was one of the women who invented the Carmen rollers. I don't know if you remember the Carmen rollers. No, maybe it's not. a little roller that was heated. Okay. Uh, I don't know whether she was um, paid for it, but yeah. great invention. So these legends, pioneers and veterans, we, really and I, we're going to pay tribute to them. Um, and I think the, the show begins next year sometime. Fantastic. Good. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll take a short break. And when we get back, we'll continue the conversation with Derek Declutter Clement. Great. Go Thank you. You know, I was thinking the other day um, while driving, Sometimes I do the motorways, and there are times what I realize is that there's a murkiness, or there's a what should I say, a cloud before you, and you don't know where you're going. You actually know where you're going, but you cannot see where you're going. And I was reminded of the shows with um, Harrison Ford, Raiders of the Lost Ark. And in Raiders of the Lost Ark, what happened? You see. Harrison Ford in the Jeep and they're going through the bushes and they're cutting away with the, the cutlass or the machetes or whatever like that and they're just going forward and when you look behind them you see the guys coming after them and you see bushes behind them and they also see as well bushes ahead but they're cutting away and the key thing which is there is that they're going through they're going through and their obstacle ahead and they can see the obstacle behind, but the most important thing is that they are going ahead. And then eventually, what happens? They actually go into this massive meadow, or this open spot, this open place whereby everything becomes light, everything becomes clear. You gotta keep going, because eventually, there's gonna be this opening, and this massive opening is gonna make such clarity and some clearness, and you're gonna say, wow wow now that's for somebody somebody's gonna say wow eventually that's for you thank you ladies and gentlemen welcome back to the show and i've got my guest mr derek declutter clement derek how are you it's a pleasure it's a pleasure so thank much. you nice to meet you well you know ladies and gentlemen we were supposed to be <laughs> we, we, we had planned to do my hair but when derek <laughs> said uh Silver is impossible. It's been done. <laughs> <laughs> it's impossible to work. Impossible for it to work. But listen, thank uh, you for coming back. Now, yeah. listen, you're coming up over 40 years in the industry. Long time. Mm -hmm. And now, uh, how do you rebrand and keep things going and keep things ticking over, um, Derek, you know, with this um, maintaining this long standing personal brand? I mean, there are people out there who have been in the hair business. Some have left it, some are in it, but. What's your secret? Mm. I mean, well, I mean, if you want to tell a secret. <laughs> <laughs> Again, as, a, as, as, as I like to stress, I mean, yes. I take my, my cue from Winston Isaacs. Yes. And he was around for uh, over, over 40 years in yes. the industry. I mean, and, and, and that was my teacher. Yes. So for me, I, I feel it's incumbent upon me, therefore, to continue the tradition. Yes. He's passed with the baton. I've got to pass the baton on to the next generation. Mm -hmm. So I've got to stick around. It's a great industry, uh, by the way. And uh, it just makes sense that I feel the urge and the need to just stick around and to give back what I was taught. Interesting you said about passing the baton because Rudy Page always talks about passing the baton mm. as well. And passing the baton means to say, of course, you're passing it 
to others, that's or right. a younger person. That's right. So I presume as well that you are mentoring. Um, we do a lot of mentoring. Yeah. We do a lot of inspiring. I think we, I feel blessed to have given this craft. And I remember how I got the craft. I remember thinking, as a young black kid, I need to work for my people. Yes. And I remember going to the hairdressers with my girlfriend, and, and there yeah. it was, a black salon. Beautiful yeah. black salon. Yeah. All black people. And I yeah. thought, that's it. <laughs> you yeah. Know? Yeah. And I was taught the trade. And the chap who taught me, as I said just now, he's, he, he lasted for over 30, 40 years. Yeah, yeah. And, and he actually passed on that skill to me. And I'm prepared to pass on the skill to the next generation. So we do mentor a lot of young yeah. people. It's interesting, we talk about um, passing the baton on and also the skill set as well. Right. Because in society these days, sometimes people all want to create new things. Right, yes, indeed. While creating new things is great, but at the same time, mm. we're not so good at times of passing on the legacy. Right, yeah. You know, because mm. one of the things they say sometimes, like even when the Windrush generation, when people came here, right. they came to build, or well, no, actually they came to work. That's right. And, and they back. came to make some money. That's right. And then the plan was to go back. That's right, yeah. The plan wasn't to stay yeah. and build. That's right, that's right. But then guess right. what? John meet Mary, Mary meet that's John, right, and then children right. come and yeah. oh, we can't leave yet, man, we have to go, you know? And then, and then that is also what has even created this Windrush saga. Precisely. Because, yes, the government has messed up, but at the same time, if we had mm -hmm. were in charge mm -hmm. or taking full control, right. having our legacies in place. That's right. And I believe what you're saying about legacy is so crucial. Absolutely. I mean, I, have, um, I think it's our industry. We yes. created it. And uh, it makes sense holding on to it forever. Mm. It's our hair, naturally. Yeah. So you need the, the, the experts like myself and the people like Winston who taught me the trade to ensure that that skill set remains with us and we pass it on to the next generation. It's very easy to lose it, you know, because yeah, yeah. you have to remember most of the big high street brands, like I would mention names, yes. they, they've actually taken over the industry very, very you know, slowly. Yeah. So we have to stick around to maintain that legacy and, and pass it on. So it's, it's but how do, how do they or did they came in and take it over? Was there like gaps in the market that they saw? Not they really. I mean, obviously, um, I mean, there's been two major brands, in my opinion, um, over the years. And I think a name comes to mind, Sinclair's, yes. back in the day, in Shepherd's Bush. Mm. I mean, they were giants of the industry and, and Winston Isaacs with his splinters. Yes. Um, it's not easy, you know, to maintain a brand. Yes. Um, like our, comp our contemporaries, mm. it, it's very expensive. Mm. I mean, our shop in, in Ealing right now cost us over 40,000 pounds a year to maintain that brand. Yes. Not to mention things like business rates, yes, yes. salaries. Products. It's, not, yes. it's, it's very hard. Yes, yes. We can't compete with our white contemporaries. Yes. Because uh, they, invariably, most of those companies are owned by larger companies. Yes, yes. For yes. instance, you assume, I mean, who owned that? Massive companies. Mm. Uh, Tony and Guy, Trevor Sorby, and so on. So we don't have the kind of investment in our, in our companies to, hold, to, to expand in the way they do. Yeah. Uh, so it's up to us to, to keep it going, as you just said just now, yeah, keep it yeah. going and pass it on to the next generation. But then at the same time, they are not actually tapping into the black market, are they? Well, the, well they are to a large extent, because I yeah. mean, obviously they're training a lot of young black kids coming directly from college and coming from yes. schools. So to an extent, they, they're not tapping into it, but they are providing the service. They're making service, okay. Mm -hmm. Now, the other day I saw this video, uh, it was a post, and it was showing cane roll. Right. You know, and um, they were saying that uh, it was a way of slaves actually communicating to these artistic hairstyles. Air stars. In Jamaica, I think we call it cornrow. Cornrow, that's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. And um, but it, as you rightly say, it was something, a legacy which was passed down that's and right, it was used right. as a way, as some escape route. That's right, that's right. It's yes, powerful right. stuff, you know. Well, I mean, black people are quite inventive. and I, I wouldn't be surprised. Yes. Uh, through, through hairstyles, we yes. can communicate with each other. I would yes. not be surprised <laughs> at all. <laughs> yeah, no, so, so that yeah. is powerful. You know? yeah. So, you know, looking at the span of your continuing career, if you were to pick any key achievement, um, mm. Derek, what would you say would be your most proudest or where you're more grateful well, I was, for? Well, yeah, I was, I'm proud to, 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 to say today that I was one of the first guys who were nominated to be the best hairdresser of the year, Afro hairdresser of the year back yes. in the day. Um, I think owning my first shop uh, in Maida Vale cost me a fortune back yes. then. Uh, that was the name very, alone. That, that's Maida right. Vale. <laughs> that's right. There you are. That was a very proud achievement. Yeah. Um, but I think the, 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 the nomination um, back in the 80s, has been the best hairdresser yeah. uh, in Britain. I think that's still, to me, today, resonating, wow. wow. definitely. Now, I, I have to always interject, and this wasn't mm. a part of my question right. for you or, or what my uh, researcher did, 
But I have to ask this question because yeah. your, your, your market and what you're dealing with is global. Right. Brexit. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, in two minutes, what, yeah. what's your thoughts on Brexit and, and in this particular field? Do you, do you see it as something which will make your feel or break your feel in the UK? I, I mean, or again, I mean, I try not to be too controversial. Yeah. Obviously, yeah. Uh, what can we do? Uh, yeah. and, and as I said to you before, we just go with the flow. Yes. Um, and it doesn't really, in my opinion, really uh, affect my business, yes. our business as such. Uh, it can only make things better. Right. We, well, what can you do at the end of the day? So what you're saying, flow. you ride the flow. Ride it, go with the flow. Ride it, <laughs> go with the flow. Take control. We always have, as a people, <laughs> as a people we always have. We've come a long way and, we've, and we're still going. We, we, nothing, nothing breaks us. You know what, that, that is powerful. And I say to people all the while is that even people, people period, there's a survival instinct which That's is right. inbuilt. With our people. Definitely. You know, but black people especially, after the transatlantic slavery, which wasn't the start of mm -hmm. our history, mm -hmm. of course, mm -hmm. it was mm -hmm. an interrupting process, That's because right. many was before, but to survive such and to actually going through mm -hmm. with the trauma and the psychological effect, yep. and yet actually moving forward. Survive this right. It's a survival instinct. We, we are very tenacious, yes. and, uh, and nothing keeps us back. Nothing. And nothing. I think we, we are perhaps the most tenacious people on the planet. But, wow. but, but bear in mind, I mean, slavery wasn't not exclusive to us alone. I mean, the English, came here as slaves. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, I mean, they were brought here by the Romans. Yes. And we were already here as a people. Yes. Uh, so slavery isn't really exclusive to us, but we've gone through the process and we survived, yeah. and here we are today. <coughs> well, Black History Month is again um, in the next month, and of course, we're going to break that down even a bit yes. more to yes. let people know, even though yes. I always say, don't wait for Black History Month. <laughs> that's right. Black History. <laughs> and it's hard, to get, <laughs> it's hard to get Black History in one month. I mean, yeah. you know, that's... You know, I mean, our history is fascinating. Yeah. Well, listen, before we go, um, Derek, can you tell me any key mantra, any key words or motivational quotes that you may have to speak to the people? You know, something that, you know, because your field is, uh, it can be fickle. Sure. Right? But you maintain the brand. Sure. There are times, you don't tell me, it has been low. Absolutely. What keeps you? What is those words that keep I, you? I, yeah. I, it may sound a bit cliche, but I, I still think um, you just got to, you never give up. Never give I, up. I mean, you just never, you just keep going. I've wow. lost a shop in 2014, <clears throat> got burnt down. Yes. I could have given up. Yes. And I came back. <laughs> you just never, you just keep going. Yes. You just never give up. Just, you just keep it, keep it moving. Wow. As I said before, because we have to pass on the legacy. Wow. And so we shouldn't let <clears throat> um, obstacles keep us back. Yeah. Wow. Well, listen, Derek, declutter. Clement. So, Bon, it's a pleasure. Well, it's a thank pleasure. you for coming thank you on the show. Much. Yes. And, um, of course, we want to make sure that Razor Sharp sees the show. <laughs> <laughs> if he's watching this show, my good friend Razor yeah. Sharp. He lives in New York. Very talented man. Fantastic, <laughs> fantastic. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you have heard uh, Mr. Clement declutter, not Razor Sharp. Razor Sharp, I know you're watching. <laughs> and one of the watching. key words that came out today was the whole aspect of never give up. It was even at the last bit. But it's so important that when one has a brand, when one has a vision, when one has a purpose, to maintain it, to keep at it, no matter what, no matter what the odds are. And what Derek Declutter Clement has taught us is showing that with his work and what his vision in, in this hair industry, and of course, let's qualify it, a barber is different from a hairstylist. A hairstylist mm -hmm. at the top level, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so let's get let's ask straight. Am I right, Derek? I think you're perfectly right. <laughs> you know? So, but the key thing, what he said, in a, in an industry like this, or in any industry, and especially within the uh, black community, at times, there can be fickle moments. But the key word, the key most important word, what Derek has shared, never give up, and that will keep you and persevere and take you right through to the end. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining the Silicon Show and thank you to our viewers for joining us this week. Find out more about our guest, Mr. Derek Clutter Clement. Go on to our website, which is silver.com. You can read up more about him. And remember, share, like, and subscribe and check out all our YouTube channels. Um, we can see our different shows, Facebook, Twitter, and as I said before, I will join Snapchat because it's about to get to the youth. You're not getting away, you've got to get to the youth. See you next time on the Silver Show. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us on the Silver and Show. And uh, of course, what I'd like you to do is to like the video, share the videos, and subscribe to the channel. Let people know about it. But the important thing is also to comment. Let us get your comments, let us get your views, so we can understand how to even please you better, ladies and gentlemen. So, as I said, share, like, subscribe. Ah, thank you. I saw you there. You subscribed and you shared. Thank you so much. See you next time.